Unfortunately, the Atlantic switch is about to be flipped. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. We're going to break down August, which looks extremely active. We talked about August 10th being that date that that flip would switch, and it looks like that's going to be the case. Also today, August 8th, NOAA released their midseason forecast outlook. We'll have their latest numbers for the rest of the season coming up, and then we'll end with Debbie. That threat for flooding rain is expanding northward into the mid-Atlantic and northeast over the next couple of days. Before we talk about the latest system that has been highlighted by the Hurricane Center, if you want to stay updated on this system and the rest that is to come and beyond, hit that subscribe button for me. We'd love to have you in this growing weather community. Post in the comments where you're tuning in from. If you have any questions, hit me up as well. All right, so now already the Hurricane Center has highlighted this and has upped the chances for development as well with this tropical wave right here, and that is going to potentially develop and likely will. I'll show you some of the modeling coming up in a couple of minutes here, but really as it gets towards uh, the lesser Antilles over the next few days, and then potentially getting up into the parts of the Turks and Caicos and the greater Antilles. So that orange area is that potential development zone of this system. The next named system of the 2024 hurricane season is Ernesto. So we're likely going to get that as well based on some of the model trends and based on the way that some of the environment is shaking up. I want to get you to the other weather computer now. We're going to look at ensembles. Again, ensembles are no doubt the best thing to look at at this stage in the game. Remember, we don't have a center. This is going to be different initial conditions put into the model, at least the different members, to give us a range of solutions rather than one point forecast. So still, I would discourage you from looking at those model run by model run as things are going to be bouncing all over the place. One thing that is clear, though, it looks like a system is going to develop out of this tropical wave, but where it's going, still a lot to be determined. So you do see there's a pretty tight consensus here. And by the way, this is the European rendition of those ensembles. Uh, the darker, the brighter colors here represents a pretty strong strong storm. So if it does stay out into the middle of the Atlantic, although you see right in here, that is where Bermuda is. So we are likely going to be watching this closely for Bermuda, potentially very closely for the Turks and Caicos, and then for the greater Antilles as well. The lighter the blues, the weaker the system. But nonetheless, looks like as we head towards the, uh, the Leeward Islands, and then maybe towards Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands over the next couple of days, we could have something to develop. The question becomes, where does this turn? It does does look like the western side of the Bermuda High, which you can kind of see that surface pressure right in here. The darker the peach, the stronger the high pressure on that color scale here. So here are the Azores for reference way out here. And note that there is uh, not as much peach towards the United States. So that would help it to lift prior to getting to Florida at this point. There's still going to be indications, though, if another system could come in here and, and try to push it back towards the United States closer to the Carolinas or New England. Right now, and you see down here, there are a few members that would suggest something getting closer to Florida and closer to the Bahamas, maybe even into Cuba. So there's a very widespread, as you may imagine for this stage of the game, but it just goes to show that it's important to watch if you're in Florida, the Carolinas, and into the Northeast, even though right now it does look like there's going to be a lot of ensemble members trying to go for the turn so we are obviously hopeful for that but remember right here and there's a better look at bermuda right in through here that turn would get it closer to us in bermuda so we're watching this closely for you guys as well this is the gfs representation there's a lot of lines going on here but the system could be anywhere and this is by the way this would be august uh, 15th through the 17th in that ballpark that it would be out in this range and i'll show you the actual model run in just one second um could get something again turks and caicos into the extreme southwest atlantic close to florida and then maybe a bend i do think the highest opportunity at this point very early going in the development of this system we're gonna have to watch for the leeward islands uh puerto rico dominican republic and then getting into the Turks and Caicos for sure. I think it is right in the Bahamas area where we might start looking about a potential turn in lift to the north. So, I mean, I think early on, I'm cautiously optimistic about any kind of direct impact from Florida, although rip currents, waves, surf, things like that could be an issue. But again, I want to stress that is way, way too early to even start talking about that. But 
we are seeing some of these members try to get close to the Carolina coast and then maybe to the northeast as well. The other thing that I want to point out with these ensembles, it's not just this storm. This is all these L's again. That's the different members of that ensemble. That storm number one out here, we have another one back here and then another one. So model guidance is now picking up on several different runs here i want to also show you that this is going to be the this is the icon model and i show you the icon model here because it ha it did do very well with barrel and it did very very well with debbie that we're still dealing with and this is going to be on thursday evening uh, august 15th and it has it does have a hurricane right around just north of the turks and caicos we can change the region on here we're going to go to the western atlantic because i want to back this up for my friends in the leeward islands and parts of the greater antilles here we're looking at a borderline tropical storm this is going to be on august 13th this is going to be in the early morning hours of august 13th closing in on the, the leeward islands and then maybe a tropical storm toward puerto rico to the Dominican Republic, and then it starts to feel that weakness on that western side of the Bermuda High. So it does start to gain latitude, as we call it, starting to turn to the north, and then there are the Turks and Caicos, and then this one wants to lift it a little bit further to the north. It remains to be seen because a lot has yet to happen uh, with some of the steering currents in play. I mean, we're looking at about a week out from now, eight days away, seven to eight days away. Um, so where that turn happens that's going to be very, very much in question over the next several days. But it does appear like this one is going to try to lift rather than cut on through the Caribbean. So that is at least a trend to watch going forward. But at the very least, it does look like by what this is going to be August 12th to the 13th, we could be looking at a Tropical Storm Ernesto, maybe even earlier than that. That's likely a depression at this point on Monday, August 12th, so on the other side of the weekend. And this is likely the start of that flurry of activity. If you've watched uh, our live streams and videos on this channel, and if you haven't, every Monday we do have something called Tropics Watch Live where we get to have a Q&A with you guys. So if you're interested in that, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. There's that shameless plug again. But I would love to have you guys join. Uh, we're very responsive and we have this conversation about meteorology and science. We don't do the scare tactics here on this channel. So I wanna be clear about that. It's all about the science and how the weather can impact you. But we're watching that closely. And again, unfortunately, I do think that this system is going to be the start of a very active period in the tropics uh, for the next several weeks. I want to uh, go forward here with the next part of this video uh, talking about what the Hurricane Center just released. So this came out every August. Uh, they do their mid-season update. And Colorado State did this the other day as well. They always do their August update really for the rest of the season. Not much has changed here. So that extremely active initial forecast that the Hurricane Center and NOAA put out in May right before the start of the season, they forecast 17 to 25 storms, 8 to 13 of those becoming hurricanes, with 4 to 7 of those becoming hurricanes. Well, on August 8th, they had their update, and the only change was shaving one off the upper echelon of that range that they gave, and they always give, uh, to 17 to 24 storms, keeping holding that 8 to 13 range on the hurricanes, and then holding the 4 to 7 on the major so that strong signal continues now just a reminder we've seen four storms to date two of those are becoming hurricanes one of those becoming major so over the next couple of months that would put us to the first week of october we are just about at the halfway point that's a lot of storms still to go i know kind of the narrative have has been especially because those super active forecasts were put into our minds prior to the start of the season um that it's been quiet, and there certainly has been a sizable break prior to Debbie. Of course, a lot of July post-barrel was quiet thanks to dust, thanks to climatology, and thanks to the suppressed phase of the Madden-Julian oscillation. We've talked about at length, that at length in some of our other videos. Um, but this is the meat of the season. More than 85% of the season occurs after the middle part of August. So again, this system likely developing around the 10th or 11th give or take that is going to be likely the starter here that unfortunately gets to a very active stretch so here is the you are here 
uh, kind of graph here. We're actually a little bit further. My uh, marker moved. We are, of course, back in August. We're closer right in through here. Um, so we have the start of the mountain to go. We're right at this little dip. And we see the biggest increase of tropical activity from the middle of August through uh, the middle of September and then even through parts of October. Of course, October is still considered peak season, especially in the Caribbean and especially into the Gulf of Mexico. So that is something that we are going to watch again for an extremely back heavy season. And we talked about that at length prior to the start of the season. All right. I know my friends are still dealing with uh, tropical storm Debbie, a lot of flooding going on in the Carolinas. As far as tomorrow, at least Debbie's now going to start to get a move on. But you see here on the excessive rainfall outlook the highest opportunity for flooding is really going to be through central central pennsylvania through places like state college into williamsport into scranton into harrisburg that's going to be the main risk uh, also extending back into hagerstown into uh, parts of maryland northern virginia uh, west of albany we're going to be under that gun there when that slight risk but that moderate risk and above is really where things start to get dicey and that is going to go through utica into syracuse and then back up to the canadian border through watertown burlington vermont and we all know it it doesn't take much to get flooding going here because we have the terrain issues that always plague us so again hour by hour forecast taking you through there's one o'clock on friday so this is going to be friday august 9th and you see the heavy rain toward philly toward central pennsylvania the center of circulation is right in through there right close to the pennsylvania uh new york border and you see the heavy rain throughout much of the state of new york that then slides towards Montreal, into Quebec, into Maine, and then eventually gets up and out of here uh, by the end of the day on Friday. So what has been a slow going um, getting rid of Debbie, of course, we talked about that, that the steering currents would drop out. It's going to race on out of here, and that is obviously a good thing, but still we have to get through the potential for some flooding. All righty, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching this. If you happen to find this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And again, consider subscribing. If you want to i don't want to force you to do that but it would be nice to have you guys along for the ride if you're finding uh this channel for the first time i'd love to know about it post that in the comments post where you're tuning in from and we will catch you next time